All right, so let's do this again because obviously I had my microphone mute. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning. This is your girl, Minister Crystal. If you are new here, I go by Minister Crystal on this channel. My name is Crystal. If you are a new subscriber, welcome, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, Welcome back. You guys go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on post notifications so you'll be notified every time I upload another video. And I want to give a big old shout out to all my new subscribers coming in. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Good morning, good morning. Real Talk with D Podcast in the building this morning. It is 10 a.m. Eastern time down here in Georgia where I'm at. Yes, you guys. So what we're going to be doing, it is going across the screen. Uh, All right, you guys. We are going to tap into science today. Okay. You guys know I talk about the spiritual realm, and I talk about science, flesh, all right? We're going to dive deep today, all right? The stuff that I talk about, it is not a game. It is not a joke. We are in warfare. We are in spiritual warfare, and what we're trying to do as Christians, we're trying to get our brothers and sisters free, all right? We're praying for their souls, all right? We're praying for their souls, all right? This is not a joke. This is somebody that I love that I'm going through this with. Somebody that I'm married to. Somebody that I gave 15 years. All right. We are praying for their soul. All right. So today we are in Garden of Heart, a 48-day devotional journey. All right. To recognize and manipulate what? 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 Narcissism. We tired of it. We defeating narcissism. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay, so we are in day 32 understanding covert manipulation. And you probably saying covert. What is covert? If you go and look in the Bible, go look in the Bible. That's why I said this ain't nothing just happened. This ain't nothing that just went viral. This is centuries and centuries way before our time. Okay, only thing changed was technology. That's the only thing changed. Technology, the appearance of people and how they look, how they wear their hair, how they wear their clothes, shoes, the stylish things, okay, to keep you up to date. But in spirit, it always been there. It been covered up in flesh. Okay, God brought it to me. Who do you know? Who do you know that was a narcissist in the Bible? Who do you know? One of the disciples, Thomas, Thomas was a narcissist in the Bible. And that's where you're going to retrieve this word, covert. Yeah. Say, yeah, it's narcissistic, been around for a long time. We just didn't know about this word is just now coming out. We've been, it's been going on. Yeah, the word narcissist narcissism narcissistic okay it's been around that's what went viral the word narcissist okay but what they should have been telling you is covert how would you know what a covert is if you don't read your bible thomas in the bible was a covert narcissist okay So if you are new to my channel and I am a minister, I am a woman of God. I am human. Okay. I am human. You're looking at flesh. We live and we learn. I'm not one of them Bible thumpers. I'm not one of them people that say, God said, do this, do this. And I lead by example. Okay. I'm going to show you what's going on. What people don't want to show you. Don't want to talk about. Want to hide. They want to throw the word of God up and hide behind it. That's not me. We're going to talk about it. We're going to dig in deep about it. And we're going to put our people on. We're going to bring our brothers and sisters back to Christ. So we are in day 32, understanding covert manipulation. I had to pull out my psychology book, but we're going in deep. We're going in deep. Abnormal psychology. It ain't a game. 
This is warfare, spiritually warfare, fighting against the darkness of principalities with mental health illness. People are seriously running around with mental health illness. Either they don't know it or they're hiding it because they think people are going to look at them weird. Now, if you lie to me, like I got lied to, you didn't, I didn't question you about it. I didn't bring up mental health issues. I didn't ask you about it. So I assume you guess, hey, she didn't ask. I ain't going to talk about it. But if you in a covenant, you married to somebody for 15 plus years, I think that's something you should let somebody know. All right. But on my end, I had to find out through spirit. I had to find out the hard way. <clears throat> That's the sad part, okay? So the verse for the day is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13, and it reads, but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. It becomes visible. That's why we say what's done in the dark shall come to the light. They can only hide for so long. Whether you're a narcissist or not, doing toxic stuff, doing evil stuff, you can only hide for so long. God said it right here. But when anything is exposed to the light, it becomes visible. You are in plain sight. Got my coffee this morning, y'all. You are in plain sight. We're not on here to be bullies. We're not on here to talk about people. Like these are people who we have spent a lifetime with. These are people who we have shared our most darkest secrets with. Where you, you know what they call pillow talk. These are people who we care about and love about and have been around them for years and did not know what we was dealing with spiritually because we wasn't biblically in tune. Shame on us because I was taught the Bible. I was introduced about God through my parents. So I know better. So I say this, we have to take some type of accountability. We can't blame everything on a narcissist. You have to take accountability for yourself. You played a part in this too. You handicapped them. You did everything for them. You washed their clothes. You did paperwork for them. You probably paid bills. You probably handled real stuff out in the real world from them. Running errands, doing all the wifely duties, overdoing your part. Real talk with D. He said, I think a lot of people is a narcissist and they don't know it. Yeah, they may have narcissist traits or characteristics, or they could be a diagnosis narcissist, what we're going to get into today. We all have a little narcissist in us because it's toxicity. But to go into psychopath, what we're going to tap down, I'm going to break it down today. It goes back, y'all. It's as deep and it's darkness and it's scary if you are not biblically in tune. I literally was frightened to see a possessed person that I love I did it like this like don't I, I'm not gonna touch you I'm not gonna touch you I don't think you understand the magnitude of a possessed person spiritually we see people, you know, probably in the hood. I don't know if you're in the hood or you live around a certain area, you probably see crackheads up and down the street scratching and doing tweaking. And, you know, I grew up in the hood. I'm from the south side in the area where I live at. I'm from what they call Killer Columbus. 
Okay. It's on first 48. Look like Birmingham going to be on first 48 too. But we see all of this stuff that is going on and we just say, oh, these people crazy. Oh, you're not, you're not spiritually in tune, baby. You're not really paying attention to what God is trying to show you. So I want you to take this script. You know this about journaling. This is about journaling. This is about self, inner self healing. This is about working on us and also praying for the ones that came against us. We are here trying to save souls. I believe people are so focused on flesh that they forget their purpose of why they are here. You went through it with a narcissist for a reason. You had the armor of God on. You made it through. Some did not make it. Pat yourself on the back because you made it through. I always do like this. Because I know I'm a survivor. But you are not done just yet. You think, oh, I'm out of it with a narcissist. I made it out. You think, oh, that's it. That's not it. You got work to do. You got work to do for the Lord. You got to be out here saving souls. That's what it boils down to. But see, a lot of us tend to get out of one toxic relationship and then we think, oh, I got out of that. Mm, I'm ready. I'm fit to do me. They get this mentality of the worldly world with that. Oh, I'm fit to do me. Oh, I know because I used to say it, jump out of toxic relationship. Be like, oh, Negro, you did me wrong. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, they did me wrong. I'm fit to do me. I'm fit to boss up. Mm -mm. You got to work on inner core self. That's bossing up. Bossing up for the Lord. When I say boss up, I'm talking about boss up in righteousness. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? So reflection. Contemplate covert manipulation tactics. Reflect on how awareness and understanding can protect you from from suitable forms of manipulation. Real talk with these say exactly 10 years with my narcissist. It was hell. She said it was hell. It's not a game. It's not a joke. People look at other people in toxic relationship. Oh, he be beating her butt. Oh, she be knocking him upside her head. That crap is sick. You are stuck in a demonic trance. It's a cycle. And you don't even have or you don't even know that you in it. You don't even know that you in it. Yeah, she said hell, meaning, oh, we have not went to down there with a devil. Until we already in hell. This is the devil's playground. I always tell people it's levels to it. Okay, we have heaven up here. We have earth. What is God and the devil coming to a conclusion on what he allows Satan to do to you, which I called heaven uh satan's playground then you have purity devil hell we just getting a little taste of what hell feel like on earth this is the devil's playground you ain't know it you didn't know it you got god on this side of the shoulder and you got the devil the satan the demons okay well i say demons because the devil, Satan, is down. We know he is. He down on the ground. The world of darkness. But these little demons, these monkeys, these flying monkeys and birds, what everybody calling them, and dogs, here on earth, this is the satanic playground, baby. You either going to get equipped with the word of God and put that armor on, 
and know how to battle in war or you gonna get sucked into society in the worldly world and be lost and ain't gonna know how to battle when these demonic entities suck you into their little games so the key is get woke the word they say i'm woke spiritually woke because they are aware they see it in the spiritual realm now Ms. D said, I had a mental breakdown after that, but I thank God I got my mind back with help and God was first. Amen. You got to have God on your side. I too. I've had plenty anxiety attacks, plenty mental breakdowns, but with God, he had you. He had you all along. You got to know him. You got to know him. All right, so we are going to be talking about APD, which is antisocial personality disorder. We're also going to be talking about BPD, which is bipolar personality disorder. And we're going to be talking about what everybody thinks is viral now, which is not, it's been out for centuries. It's, it's biblical because the word of it is not narcissist, it's covert it's just the wording has changed you know there's different languages to different times and different people that's all that change to keep it update but if you go back biblically it's covert c-o-v-e-r-t go read up on the 12 disciples read on thomas in the Bible, read about the things that that disciple did in the Bible. He was very charming. He was very sneaky. He was a cheater. He was a liar. Yeah, we're going to get into that CPTSD. Mm -hmm. I was talking about that, uh, what, yesterday or the day before? That's what you have after a narcissist. A lot of people don't know about that, Miss D. We're going to get into it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, APD, Antisocial Personality Disorder. And I got my psychology book here. Uh, let me see. Do I want to get in that first? Let's see, because I do have my worksheet up here. Let's see. I think that I broke my bullet point notes now. All right, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> I actually went and did all this this morning. Y'all keep telling y'all I'll be in them, t them TV series. Me and my daughter will be catching up on it. All right, let me see. <laughs> It's okay. Like, God got his hand on his children. You understand? God got his hands on his children. See, with these narcissists, they are up on a spiritual attack with these demonic entities, and they don't know it. That's why they can't remember half of the crap that they do to you. They sit down and I'd be like, why do you do the stuff that you do? Why are you taking me through this? Why are you taking us through this? I don't know. They really don't know because Satan has them so confused they can't remember half of the stuff that they do. It is warfare. It is warfare. All right. So understanding, we're going to go into understanding co uh, covert manipulation. A covert narcissist is a term used to describe individuals who exhibit narcissistic personality traits, but in more suitable and less overt manner than the stereotypical grandose narcissist. You have grandose narcissists, then you have 
covert narcissist. I'm not going to get all the way into grando, uh, grandos narcissist because I dealt with a covert narcissist. And when I say this is biblical, anybody that know me and been following me on YouTube, y'all know my narc real name. Y'all know my narc real name, which I just done. I told you previously, go biblically in the Bible. This ain't a game. Okay. Covert narcissists can be difficult to identify. I did not know this. I was married to a covert narcissist for 15 years. I just found this out, started leading up to a narcissist in 20. When we move here. Oh, Jesus, my brain, y'all. Short memory. This just ooh, pray for me. 2020. I think we move here 20 in the country. We move here 2020. 2020 or 2021. I believe we move here 2020. 2020 and i got married in 2019 i meant 20 uh 2009 excuse me y'all i got married 2009 i didn't find out what i was dealing with spiritually until 2020 that's a big gap to not know who you are married to who I laid in the bed with for 15 years, off and on. Built the family together. Built a lot of stuff together. Went through a lot of stuff. Gun violence. Drugs. Streets. Went through a lot of stuff. And God led me to the disciples in the Bible. God led me to a lot of stuff. God led me back to school to learn in flesh. Through psychology. God led me biblically in the Bible to learn spiritually. Because when you're dealing with a narcissist, baby, you got to be equipped spiritually and in flesh. Okay? So covert narcissists can be difficult to identify. We see this. We have somebody on here said they was married for 10 years with a narcissist. I have 15 years. People that I talk to in my community, uh, group chats and online digital journalist stuff that I do, 26 years, 50 years, their entire life. They Some of them still with them. They so old, one sleep in one room and the other sleep in the other room. They've been with this narcissist their entire life, so it kind of slowed down once you get so old and crippled. Ain't much you can do. But I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to be awakened and we are going to be equipped because we are not about to be no bitter, sour women walking around here or no bitter, sour men. Because we chose to deal with a narcissist and we didn't know who the heck we was getting into it with. We didn't know because we were so focused on the outer appearance with flesh of things, materialistic. Did you truly know that narcissist? Did you truly love that narcissist? Or did you love what that narcissist could do for you? Hmm. Hello. Covert narcissists can be difficult to identify because they may appear modest, shy. See, that's where that charm come in. They're smooth, slick, fine. Oh, he got money. Oh, he take care of me. He do all of this for me, baby. He just, woo, he my everything. Baby, nobody better not be your everything but Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is my everything. You understand? He is my everything. He is my father. He is my lover. He is my confidant. He is my everything. And it take a lot of us to go through stuff before we get to this area that we can say that. My God. They appear modest. They appear shy. Let me tell you, they only appear shy around you and around the people who you're around. They only going to show only so much. But then when they get around people who are in the demonic world of them who are in sin and playing in sin as they are, they will come out and be themselves. They will take the mask off, honey, be cussing, 
smoking, doing drugs, maybe a drug dealer may undermine somebody. You don't know what these people are capable of doing in sin. Shy or self effacing on the surface. However, beneath this outward demeanor, they harbor a sense of entitlement. Oh, yeah. You're going to pay a price. See, with covert narcissists, they charm you. They ooh and they ah you and get you to fall for them. And like you're looking like, oh, I'm going to pay the favor. They're doing everything for me. They're doing all of this and that. Oh, I love them so much. Girl, he just bought me a car. Bought me plenty of cars until I started buying the cars because you was tearing them up. You got to look at when you with a narcissist, a covert narcissist at that. Because, baby, they the top dollar demon. You understand? They the top dollar You got to look at it as they are doing things for you as an investment. Oh, yeah. It's an investment. It's an investment. It's an investment. It's an investment. And you thinking they doing all of this for you at the kindness of their heart, that they love you, that they truly care about you and they probably did you know if you go back on videos that i said i told my narc i said you was on a mission to destroy me y'all go back and look at that video when i told y'all i was uh talking to a uh, a guy he was a pastor that's one of my viral videos on my channel now he was a pastor he ended up demising himself he was linked to my narc so if y'all go back and look at that video you'll get some of what i'm about to say now when I met my narc, I told my narc, I said, you came into my life because, for one, you you got you did all the pillow talk in my ear because you was leaving old girl and you needed a new supply. I ain't know nothing about you. That's how they do. They're going to talk about their ex or whoever they've been with, pillow talk you, spoil you, do everything to you, give you everything that they didn't do to that one, what they learned from that one, and do it and give it to you. So they can mosey their way in. But I told my narc, I said, you wasn't meant to be here long term. He was sent to do his job for the devil. He was sent to do his purpose. But see, he didn't know he fell into the arms of a Christian. He didn't know he fell into the arms of a woman who knows God. He didn't know that he was coming to a family of Christians and people who go to church and worship God and praise God and receive the Holy Ghost and cast out demons. See, he didn't know he, what he was dealing with. So since he didn't know what he was dealing with, he slipped up and fell in love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He slipped up and fell in love. But see, as he began to fall in love with me and I began to show him a different lifestyle of what he was used to, he still had his old wicked ways. So them demons couldn't stop jumping off of him because he kept running back to the demonic playground. God will send you somebody for a change. God will send you somebody for change, but they got to want it. They got to want it. And that's how a lot of narcissists fail the test of repentance and giving their life back to Christ. Because God put the light right in front of them. They see it, but they avoid it because they so used to playing these demonic games that they got to go back out there and do all that craziness. And I told my narc, I said, when you met me, 
you really didn't love me. You didn't love me. You didn't like me. All you knew was, hey, I need a place to live. That covert narcissist needed a place to live because he was trying to get away from that baby mama and that new baby he just had. He was like, I got to go. If things ain't going right over here, I got to go. He was with that girl for eight years. Got with me three months and married me. I guess he said, whoa, I hit the jackpot. He said, whoa, I hit the jackpot. I got to secure this one. So I had so I can have a lifetime of supply. Okay. So entitlement of lack of empathy and a need for excessive admiration. A lifetime of supply. That's when he locked it in. Three months, baby, he will hook. Oh, I want to marry you. Got a ring and everything. Showing me y'all, baby, I was his dime piece. I was young. I was flirtatious, baby. I was out there. You know what I'm saying? I party, you know, had the crowds, all of that. Oh, he like, hell. Yeah. It's what I need. I was a busy person with work. Manager, supervisor, every job I had, I had to take care of a group of people. So if you are big, that's why I tell you, you got to pay attention. Covert narcissists, narcissists, period. They like people that already got money, got home, got cars, got the establishment, got things going on, family and friends. Because see, you so focused on all that stuff, you don't put all your attention just on them. They like that in the beginning. They like that in the beginning, okay? So key characteristics of covert narcissists include grandosis. That's what everybody talk about, the grandosis. While overt narcissists display grandosity overtly, covert narcissists may have a more hidden sense of superiority and uniqueness. That's why I tell you, baby, the covert narcissists, that's the top dollar narc you understand that's the top dollar narc you gonna be in it with them so deep you ain't gonna know what hit you that's why you hear people saying they went into deep depression they have what she said mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mental breakdowns I can tell y'all about a time I had a mental breakdown. This is when my, I already, I already knew that I had anxiety. I had anxiety ever since I was uh, 10 years old. You know, the first guy that I truly fell in love with, he was a street dude. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew him or whatever. He's very popular. Our relationship was very popular. Um, but he ended up being demise suicidal style. And I've talked about this with a lot of y'all. Um, my God. That's when my anxiety started. But on this occasion with this narc, <clears throat> I literally was having a mental breakdown. This narc took me to the hospital. I couldn't breathe. It feels like you are having a heart attack. I have a good heart. Went to a heart doctor. Have my own heart doctor specialist and everything. All right. I was having a mental breakdown. And this narcissist was the cause of it. Stressed me out so bad. He's actually sitting on the side of me. Watching me. Having a mental breakdown. Listening to the doctors talk about me going through cancer and how hard it was being, you know, they're just going over the back of my history. Cause anytime I go into an emergency room, I'm going to be there for a while to where well, they know me by heart. Not cause I've been there so many dang on times, but they have to go to the backlog. They put that red bracelet on me because they know um, allergies and certain medication. They don't want no lawsuit. All right. And my primary care doctor have it anytime because he used that hospital. Anytime I go in that hospital, they have to contact him. All right. So 
this narc is sitting on the side of the bed of me. I already know, like, his phone just blowing up, ringing, 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 ringing. Let me tell you, when you think you're the only one, you're not the only one. They got all these side pieces, these uh, these other supplies that they messing around with. They got multiple women. If you men, if it's the men, they got uh multiple women. If it's the woman, they got multiple men, vice versa. I'm talking from my experience because I'm a woman. But this narc phone just blowing up, blowing up. I'm sitting up here having pan attacks after pan attacks. These people had to give me, a, a, I think it's a volume, a volume or something. They gave me something to calm me down, y'all. I never took that in my life. When I tell you they gave me that, I, I was seeing spiders. Do you hear me? I was seeing, a, it was either a spider or a bee. That's how demonic, that's how demonic this witchcraft stuff is. He's sitting up. He's the cause of all this stuff. I take accountability for staying with them. You understand? I talk about that. But this narc, they sit up there and feed on your mental breakdowns. He's watching me. Literally up here gasping for air. Sweating. Freaking out. While doctors are sitting over here talking and trying to calm me down. Trying to get the back history on me and everything. Pull up my chart and everything before they do anything. And he's sitting up here watching. And I remember his phone just ring, ring, ring. I'm like, who? And my mom like, who the heck is that calling you? And I'm sitting up here freaking out. At that day, I was in the hospital. My second, my second oldest son was graduating. He was graduating from uh, high school. And I couldn't make the graduation. Because I had them spazzed out and I'm in the freaking hospital. And this narc is sitting right there on the side of me, just looking on his phone, looking at his phone with text or whatever, phone ringing. Then whoever he was talking to, he said, I'll be back. He went out. He came back. I was more, more, more calmer because they had them gave me that volume. I'm probably saying it wrong, honey. <laughs> But I never forget because I end up, I don't know if I didn't call. I think my baby sister, she called me. She was on the phone with me. I think she was pregnant with my nephew at the time. I can't remember, y'all. So much done happened. And that's what you'll have. You'll have memory loss the longer you are with these narcissists. You'll have short-term memory loss. But I also have short-term memory loss because of the health issues I've been through. But I remember being on that phone with my sister. And I would tell her, I said, girl. I said, I, I see a bee. It was either a bee or a spider. And I'm laying up there. I'm on the phone. I said, girl. I was so high. I said, girl. I'm going to just say a spider. I said, I see a spider crawling on this bed. And then she said, a spider? She said, what they gave you? And then I was trying to describe what they gave me. And then I said, it's gone, girl. When I say my sister got scared, she said, I got to get, she said, you need rest. She said, I got to get off this phone with you. She got off the phone with me. When he came back, I was calm. I looked at him. I said, you know what? I said, it's your fault. I said, you doing this to me. You causing this. You causing all this stress. And he's sitting up there. They will smirk in your face. They don't care. They have this grin or this little smirk. Oh, you tripping. You crazy. They like to call you crazy because they driving you crazy to make you think you crazy. You ain't crazy. You very well know what's going on. And then I said, he be like, what you want to eat? I said, it's this Mexican restaurant that we uh that we like. It's actually a store, and they sell like all stuff for Mexican, but it's a restaurant in the back of it. So I was like, you know, go there and get my, my favorite meal that I like to eat. Why well, this food came back with something that I didn't ask for? That started up an argument. Now I'm out the hospital. Now he gaslighting me because I told him to go get my favorite meal that I like. And he noticed because we eat the same thing. 
and he brings back something that I don't eat. So that gas lit me and now I'm exploding and I'm still, he, girl, he just had a day with me. Do you understand? That narcissist just had a day with me. I'm still getting blood pressure. I'm just still screaming and hollering while we in the car driving. Do you not hear how demonic and stressful and dangerous this is? Say, so, yeah, they don't. I follow this doctor on YouTube. She talks about this and I love her. <laughs> the life after a narcissist. This is worse narcissist than them. Hold me. I follow this. Okay, you wrote it again. Yes, I have fog brain frozen. That's what they call it. Yeah. I used to have fog going through cancer. I had the foggy brain stuff. They straight it's demonic. The devil don't want you to remember nothing. Because if you remember, that means you're aware of what's going on, right? So, seeking approval, covert narcissists often crave approval and affirmations, but may not openly seek attention. They always want to be in superior. They all want to be, look at me, look at me. Oh, I did this at work. Oh, they always want to be in superior. If they're not in a supervisor or management position, baby, they're going to talk about it like they in one. Did you hear what I said? I said every job I had, I was a supervisor or a manager. They don't like that. I was in superior within my workforce. They imitate you. If they feel you are above them, Maybe they're going to work 10 times harder to be above you or lie and act like they are above you when y'all supposed to be equal. Who said we are in a race? Who said we are competing? Why do you want to compete with your wife or your husband when you are a covenant? You are as one. You're supposed to grow and elevate together. Not, tell, not try to tear that person down. You won't see it in the beginning if you are a busy person and you got things going on for yourself. And I was that. Five kids and a supervisor or a manager, household, friends, families, going together and doing stuff. I was busy. I, at that time, I didn't have all the time that, you know, have all my attention on him. That's when they out there getting up. <laughs> Why are you so busy taking care of home and doing everything as a wife? They out there in them streets gathering up their posse. Mm -hmm. They posse to be against you. I knew something was wrong when me and my nart, we used to go to everywhere together, bars, clubs. We went everywhere. Perfect little couple, perfect married couple. Okay, everybody used to watch us, you know, dancing in the clubs and everything. And ooh, all this good stuff. The moment they say, oh, I'm going to go here. You go hang out with them. They start, you know, suggesting. I'm going to go hang out with the fellas. You hang out with your cousin. Them. Oh, I'm going to hang out with my coworkers. You hang out with your cousin. Them. Mine was always family members. Couple times, people from work, you know, that I work with, you know, we all would go out and do stuff. Very seldom. Small group, women, bars, clubs, you know, hopping around town, downtown, girly stuff in our soft era. But you know, when you get the buzz and all that, you want to find your man. You want to go where your man is. Okay. You keep looking, like I said, you're going to find out where your man at. Your man in another bar, in another club with one of his co-workers. That's not a male, it's female. You with a co-worker, all right. So that's when they give you all this attention. They love bum you. You know, you be like, oh, when you getting off of work? What you want to eat? What you want to do this? We're going to cuddle. We're going to watch movie, Netflix, and chill. We're going to do all of this. They get you stuck in that mindset and then they slowly begin to pull that attention and affection away from you. 
This leads to you following and begging. This is where seeking the approval and attention begins. Because you're going to come like a little puppet. What's wrong? You got to be the problem solver. What's wrong? What's going on? Yeah, you, they'll, they'll give you the sad, silent treatment, come in the house, look and say, I could not stand this. Ain't no way you coming home every day from work, coming in the house, looking sad like you just don't want to be here. And here I go, falling for the okie doke. What's wrong? You had a hard day at work. What happened now? Who done did what now? Making all this stuff up in their head, fantasizing. Child, they probably had a good thing on day at work. And they're going to come home and tell you the opposite. So you can be the puppet master. You the puppet. They the puppet master. They got you on strings. They're going to come in looking sad. Or just giving off that low vibration energy. So you can come in like, what's wrong? Tell me about your day. Because I used to always tell my nerd, what goes on at work, don't bring it home. That's work stuff. That's your work life. Don't bring it here. You need to be able to turn it on and off because I knew how to do it. Whatever I had going on at work, ain't got nothing to do when I come home. When I come home, I'm a wife. I'm focusing on my children and I'm focusing on my home and whatever I got to take care of. When I go back to work, that's when I worry about all that. You got to understand and know how to separate the two. But they didn't do that because they was making it up. They want the attention from you. Oh, okay, then we're going to get your bath. You know, I'm going to go ahead and cook, get your, uh, get your plate. If I ain't already cooked, fish your food or whatever you get right. Or get your massage. Do I, they want all this tension and affection. Why are they out there lollygagging, lying, playing, making up stuff? And got you falling for the okie doke. And then they do it so much. When I say they are some compulsive liars. Girl, they make up so much dang on stuff. At this point, you know they be lying. That's why I always say, stop them. Stop anybody. Even if they're not a narc. If you know somebody is lying, look at their body language. I tell you, I sit right there and look at you. And I be like, I know you lying. You telling the, I used to say, you telling the effing lie. You effing lying. You got to stop people from lying to you. That's why I say you got to take accountability because we are allowing them to lie to us. We're sitting up here listening to the lies. We're watching and listening to lies, whether you believe it or not. Why you didn't speak up and say, now I know you lying. It got so bad to the point of, I don't know if his side pieces of the supplies out there in the street were messing with my cars or he was doing it his car was down so he was driving my chrysler to work my chrysler come home this ain't the first time something that happened to one of my cars we always had our own car like i buy a car i get tired of that car i'm like hey you can have this car i don't outgrow this car i get another car this man come home in my chrysler he come looking, sad he go. He out, the energy just was off all the time. It was draining me each and every day. Lord, help me. What is wrong? Ain't no way you feel like this every day. This man, I'm laying in the bed. This man come in. I was on a lot of medication then. Because keep in mind, I'm, I was healing from cancer, all right, in remission. So I'm on a lot of medication. Believe it or not, I was on 20 prescriptions. 20 prescriptions. I am down to about four. I'm down to about probably five prescriptions now. Five prescriptions daily. So I'm laying in the bed because a lot of my medications make me tired. I need rest. So I'm laying down. Here come this fool. They're fool. My mama always said, you see a fool, leave a fool, or you will be a fool. And I was a dang on fool for 15 years. So I'm laying down. This fool come in. <clears throat> I think it was a stool on the side of the bed. He sit there, got his leg propped up. 
I'm laying in the bed. I'm on my phone scrolling. I don't know what I was on. Some social media. You know how we do laying in the bed. He come in. He said, I got something to tell you. I said, well, go on, get it out. You know me, honey. I'm loud. Get old baby. It is what it is. I said, well, go on, get it out then. Don't come here and tell me I got something to tell you. What is it? Don't be mad. I said, what is it? This him gaslighting me. Because I told him, don't drive my car. I didn't want him driving my car. But he the bread one of his car down. The Negro got to get to work. So I had to let him drive my car so he can get to work. We live out of town. So he goes and say, I had them to run the camera back. <laughs> this is me, Emma He don't talk like this, y'all. But, you know, I'm just trying to give a more masculine uh, voice. He said, I had them to run the camera back and see uh, what happened to the car. Uh, somebody bad back into the car and took bad back into your car, but they didn't. They, I don't know if he said they they didn't see who it was. Oh, he did. He said they wasn't an employee. That's what he said. Cause the the supposedly person who bagged back into my car and put this dent into my bumper in the back of my car, they didn't work there. That car or whoever it was in that car didn't work there. Y'all, I'm so frantic. I'm so mad like the fire is burning in me. I'm ready to dot this man in his head. Do you hear me? I said, man, what? He said, I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to get it fixed. I said, man, show me. Show me. Show me. He go outside, take a picture of it on his phone, come back in the house. Because I ain't get up. I'm in the bed, Steve. And show me. And... I don't know. It wasn't really big, but it was more like a round circle. You know how trucks have those ball things on that you could hook a trailer or hook something onto it? That metal piece, that ball piece, that's what it looked like. Somebody that had that on the back of their truck or their car would and bag that and it went into the back of my car. And I said... Man, go on to tell me what it really is. Because it's always something. You in these streets playing around. And that's the fir first thing women will do. That ain't nothing I never did. I always went to them when you face to face. And look if you book. Okay. But some women, they tend to go attack the, the men's or the women uh, materialistic things. Tell you call up. Put sugar in your tank. Do all that. I ain't going to do all that. I'm going to get in your pocket. I'm going to hit you legal way. But so he showed me that it gaslit me. I exploded. Failed that test. Arguing, fussing. I'm going to get it fixed. The whole time I'm arguing and fussing about my car, y'all, this man is smirking. This smirk, this grin, this demonic smirk in his grin. <laughs> it's even in our picture. When we got married, we got married at the courthouse and we took pictures. Even in the pictures, I used to always look back and I've showed people these pictures. I said, look at this smirk on his face when he married me. Before I even knew about all this, before I even knew this, this man was toxic. All I was toxic too when we first got together. Before I even knew about all this toxic stuff, all that, I used to always look at that mar our marriage pictures. And on one of those pictures, those photos, he has this grin, evil grin on his face like, yeah, I got him. I kid you not, have this picture right now today. Them pictures is in the Bible. He has a grin on his face like, and his arms are around me like this. Yeah. And he like this. You know how you take them pictures where they hold you and all that. But it's his face expression on that picture. It looks so evil. So, yeah, a covert narcissist often crave approval and affirmations, but may not openly seek attention in the beginning. In the beginning, vice versa. Victim mentality. They may adopt, they may adapt a victim mentality, portraying themselves as misunderstood or mistreated while subtly man, uh, manipulating others to gain sympathy and support. 
You don't love me. You don't care about me. You don't love me. You don't care about me. That's what they'll say. They'll tell you you don't love me. They'll tell you you don't care about me. Why? So you can give them attention. So when they say you don't love me, you don't care about me, you're going to be like, why you why you said that? Why are you talking like that? I do love you. I do care about you. They already know this. That's a part of manipulation. Lack of empathy. Like overt, we're talking about covert, but like overt narcissists, covert narcissists struggle with empathy and may have difficulty understanding or caring about others' feelings. That's where it comes in where we say they don't care. They don't care. Because if they care, why are they doing it over and over and over again? If they cared and love you so much, why are they cheating on you, mistreating on you over and over again? Physically abusing you mentally, emotionally, financially over and over again. Literally looking at you in pain, showing no type of empathy. Remember I was telling you about the incident? I'm in the hospital and he's sitting there. You know, a person that has empathy, they'll be holding you, caressing you, rubbing your arm or rubbing your leg or, baby, what can I do? Do you need me to get some ice water? You know, they're going to show empathy and sympathy. What did I say this Nart was doing? This Nart was sitting there on his phone, like what I'm doing, like whatever. Whatever was on his phone was more important than what was going on with me. Manipulation. Covert narcissists can be skilled manipulators. You should know they are skilled. See, they want you to believe that they're dumb, they're stupid, they're a fool, they're this and they're that. When in reality, they're studying you you're their protege to destroy to demise to make a fool of to make a mockery of to show people like hey i got her or i got him and i can still do what i want to do in the streets as disrespect they're manipulating you they're gaslighting you Covert knots can be skilled manipulators using suitable tactics to control situations and people to meet their needs. When they get you in so deep, when you get in so deep, and I mean years, years and so deep. That's why people that are married to these type of people, narcissists, they go through the most. Because especially if you are a Christian. Especially if you are a firm believer in Jesus Christ, they will use your faith, your religion, your belief against you because they know that you're supposed to forgive. And they're going to manipulate you and use, oh, I'm not perfect. That's going to be the main thing they're going to say. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. People make mistakes. I'm not perfect. People make mistakes. People don't keep doing the same thing for years and years and years and years and years. That means that they are aware of what they are doing. It is not, not a mistake. When you make a mistake, you do something. Oh, my bad. Won't do that again. I understand. Obviously, they understand, but they don't care. Lack of empathy and sympathy. They do not care. They are doing it because you allow them to do it. Who will change? That's why I keep telling them, who will change when they know they can have their cake and eat it too? What I'm gonna be faithful to her for? What I'm gonna be faithful to him for? When I know I can have my cake and eat it too, and ain't nobody gonna say nothing to me, ain't nobody gonna make arguments, ain't nobody gonna rebuttal. 
Maybe they in heaven, in your world. It's like heaven to them in your world, destroying you. Insecurity. Despite their outward appearance, covert narcissists often have fragile self-esteem and are highly sensitive to criticism. My narc is bald head. My narc has like what they call that you that cow that that uh cow lick how your hair grow with your hair grow on the outer side and not in the middle to be at the age that you are are at why are your hairline growing like that but see as us empathetic people what some people say empaths when you're just a chosen one you're just a child of God that's why you have empathy. It's your discernment. It's the light in you, the soft spot for you to forgive and move on, to grow, to nature, to nurture. You have all this embedded in you from Christ. You are confident in your appearance. You are confident in the way you talk, the way you speak, the things you do. Everything that you are, that narcissist is going to try to turn it around against you and use it against you. I'm a very outspoken person. I'm a very open person. I don't have a problem with speaking to people in large groups, whether in person or online. I'm confident in everything about me from head to toe. Like I said, if you don't like something about you, then change it. But see, like I said, his hairline, he was not confident in his hair or his hair. So he always wore hats. He always wore do-rags. Anybody that know me, know my narc, know us from Killer Columbus, then you know you ain't going to never catch him without a hat. Or do rag on. So that was something that I knew that he was self conscious about. And I used to always tell him, you know, just cut your hair. You know, if you don't like the way your hair growing, just cut it or your hair. I love a bald head man. I love a man with a good haircut too. But I embraced it, you know. I began to motivate him. You know, you look good. You know, go on the shade line. You go teed up, you know. See, that's what they want. We're here motivating these narcs, inspiring them, uplifting them. And they're not reciprocating the love and the positivity that we're pushing out for them. They're draining it from us and destroying us from inside out. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? To destroy you from inside out while you are supplying them with all of this positivity, they're not reciprocating. You got to ask them, babe, how my hair look? Babe, how this outfit look? Oh, do you think this co- these color earrings look good on me? You like this lipstick? How my lashes look? Bay, how I should get my nails in? You bay this, bay this. Bay, how bay? You asking bay for all of, all of his opinions to validate you. You know who you are. You know you are unique. You know you are beautiful. You know you are lovely. You know you are victorious. You know you are strong enough. You know you are capable and amazing. And you know you are never alone, whether you are with them or without them. Baby, you better shine like the queen that you are. You understand? Because this, they lost. Not yours. They did you a favor. You understand? They did you a favor. They are insecure. Not you. They will drag you down so much that you will start feeling insecure about things you never felt insecure about. Oh, I never felt insecure about when I put on clothes. Now I got to watch myself and put on about three or four outfits, change about three or four times before I go somewhere 
to see if I like how my body look in this out in these outfits. When before you got with them, child used to go buy something, put your outfit on, baby, do you, and you ready to go. Now you change the clothes about three or four times because you up there sitting a bay. You like this? How this look on me? Oh, how my butt look? Oh, how my breasts look? How my stomach look in this? You think I need to switch this shirt or these pants out? What about these shoes? Stop dressing these men. Stop buying these men clothes and shoes. Baby, let me tell you something. I reciprocate, but one thing I do know in the marriage, you as a husband, you going to do your part. If you ain't going to do your part, you ain't going to do it at all. A lot of women are out here dressing these men. That ain't your child. Quit dressing these men, honey. You're molding them and creating them into an image of something that you want. And then when they don't keep up their appearance and do the things that you started, then you're going to be mad. I know that's for somebody out there listening. Hello. So insecurities, you already know they have insecurities because they tell you about them or you see them for yourself. I used to always tell my nerd, you look good. Don't worry about it. Your ball here. Now stop wearing them hats. And I used to say, you in the house. Why you got a hat on? You in the house. Take that do-rag off. You had the dirt do-rag on while you at work. Take that off. You begin to talk to them like, like you would talk to your teenager kids. It's inner core work with a narcissist. And we're going to get into that. It is things that they have not dealt with. From their childhood. It is things that they have not shared with you. From their childhood. It is things that they have been exposed to. That they have not shared with you. From their childhood. Identifying covert narcissism can be challenging. Due to the details of their behavior. Their manipulation and need for validation may be less obvious, making it important to pay attention to consistent patterns of behavior on time. Over time, excuse me. Over time. Over time. I didn't begin to pay attention to my narcissist until I got diagnosed with cancer. When I got diagnosed with cancer, something else happened before that where we end up having, having to uh, leave our home and move with my mom. And then I got diagnosed with cancer. So I'm sick. I'm focusing on chemo. I'm focusing on uh, radiation, two different types of radiation. I'm focusing on over 20 prescribed medications. I'm focusing on God. I'm focusing on my children. What if God take me right now? Who my children going to be? I'm, I'm putting all this together. Letting my baby sister know that I want you to take care of my kids. If God call me home right now. I'm putting stuff in position in place. I ain't worrying about this man. And the whole time while I'm doing all of this, this man is still in the streets cheating running back to baby mama and exes and people out in the streets while his wife is sick, homeless. You, I'm homeless, you homeless. We living with my mama. And you still not doing right. These narcissists do not care. They love to confine and have you mold down in a poverty mentality. Because if you are in a poverty mentality, they know you are not strong. They know you're not strong. They know you have no strength. But when I was weak, God led me to a God-fearing person, which is my mother. Baby, she going to anoint, she going to pray, and she going to cast them demons up out of there. 
So why I'm focusing on all this healing and stuff, this man still gas lighting law. I could tell y'all numerous of things that happen. Even my doctors witness and know something went wrong. My my primary care doctor, we got the both, we both had the same primary care doctor. Even my primary care doctor said, I'm going to just say, he said, Joe, Joe is something serious. He said, Joe is something serious. He knew then that something was not right. He said, Joe is something serious. Even when I first got diagnosis, we go to doctor's appointments. This man is in here sleeping, playing like he's so tired. Doctor used to have to tell him, hey, you need to be awake. You need to be up and listening because the stuff that we're telling her, she's not going to remember with the amount of medication and the stuff that she's going through. Half of the stuff that we tell her, she's not going to remember it. And I couldn't. So we need somebody here that is attentive and supportive of her, not just a body. He was there in flesh, but in spirit and mind, he was gone. He was not there. He was not attentive. He was not aware. They was like, she needs somebody here supported that it was that is attentive and a, aware of what's going on. That way they can remind her of what, what we said or can relate it to other family members. So at this time, I'm like, okay, I need to put my mama on here and one of my sisters on here that can pull my health record if anything happens to me. But at that time, so much stuff was going on in my family. He was the only one that could take me here and there because everybody had jobs, school. Everybody had something to do. And around the time that my appointments and stuff was scheduled, he was off. And I used to, at the time, I used to be like, I'm up and say, oh, he tired. He worked third shift. You will begin to take up for a narcissist. They like that. You will begin to take up for them when they're not even being supportive for you. That's the manipulation. I'm sitting up here saying, oh, he tired. He just, he worked third shift. He tired. He been working all night. I don't care how tired I am of being at work. If my loved one has cancer and is sick and could possibly die, I'm going to be awake. I'm going to be paying attention to what these doctors are saying. Or I'm going to have somebody there that can relate it. I went through all of that to the point I started saying, just get me to the door of the hospital and I will walk myself. You don't have to come in. I will walk myself up to chemo. And I walk myself out. I'm sick and still putting all my attention and affection on this narcissist. You better tell me women ain't strong. You better tell me women are not strong and capable and amazing. Okay. All right. So now we are going to get into bipolar personality disorder. This is going to be a lengthy live stream. Because it ain't just about, oh, I'm an abusive relationship or I'm in abusive marriage with a narcissist. You need to know the mental behind it. You need to know the mental behind it. You need to know the spiritual and the flesh, which is mental psychology mental health a lot of people grew up not being exposed or know things about mental health people just used to call you crazy oh they crazy oh they retarded just call you all these names because they are unaware of what's truly going on they are uneducated people that call people crazy retarded slow and all that, these people are uneducated they are the fools Okay, they, they are the fools because they don't understand. They don't know. They only repeating things what they was raised up around or exposed to. 
a lot of people don't like to accept that they have a mental health problem. Mental health is real. And it's going around. Whether you are in the physical realm or the spiritual, baby, I'm tuned into both. I'm tapping into both. I'm tapped in to both. That's why I can't be around a lot of people. You understand? Because God got to keep me focused on what he needs to me to be focused on. So let's go ahead and get into borderline personality disorder. Now, all these things that I'm talking about, this is not to blackmail. This is not to bully. This is to educate. And if you take offense into anything that I'm saying, then that means you have a you problem or a them problem. You need to go seek counseling. You need to go seek a therapist. You need to go seek a psychiatrist. You need to go get an evaluation done ASAP because your problem is not with me. The problem is within you. I'm speaking about what is in you that is irritating you because you have not dealt with your inner self. I'm dealing with my demons. I always say we all got demons. Because you never know to the extent of sin that someone is capable of doing. All right. So we are in borderline disorder. Hold on, y'all. I got the fine. I don't want to use that. I got this uh sharpened, but that sucker strong. Let me see. Give me a highlighter. Hold on, y'all. Today we teaching the day. It's on the day. Told y'all we're gonna tap into it. Hold on, let me get this uh find me a sharp. I mean a uh, highlight. There go one. Let me turn this fan off too, but my feet's cold. You got to want the help. You can't talk about it. You got to be about it. You got to be about it. All right. Um, trying to see, do I really supposed to got into anti-personal disorder? But I got bipolar up here. Um, let me see. Okay, no, 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 right there. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. We're gonna get into borderline personality disorder, but we're about to do uh APD first. I got my uh, book right here. Let me go by my notes. We're going to talk about APD, which is antisocial personality disorder. This is stuff that I have been studying. I'm still studying stuff. Um, but I do have my psychology book right here in front of me. <clears throat> If you are looking for this type of book, like I don't think people be really interested in this book. <laughs> in this case, you love psychology and you're going to school to be a counselor, a therapist, a psychiatrist, or a doctor. Um, if you are interested in the book that I'm studying from, then it is on Amazon. I'm not sure if it's at Book of Nobles. And this is science. These are facts that I'm reading, that I'm quoting. All right, so we are going to go over antisocial personality disorder, clinical description. It says the core feature of antisocial personality disorder, which 
abbreviations is APD. Is a pervasive pattern of disregard for the rights of others. The person with APD is distinguished by aggressive, impulsive, and callous traits. The DSM-5 criteria, which I'm going to go over some of those after I finish reading this, specify the presence of conduct disorder. I wish I had some. I have to get something to see it right here. What was I lost my mark? Okay. People with APD often report a history of such symptoms as truancy, running away from home. Get my mark. Running away from home. What do narcissists do? They discard. So they jump homes from homes from homes. Some narcissists may have this, not saying that all, but it's, it is three things that I'm going to cover that I want you to do your research on, okay? Don't take my word for it. Do your own research like I do my own research, all right? So you know that it's factual, all right? I'm just putting, the, I'm just a messenger, a vessel for the Lord to educate you on mental health and also biblically. All right, so it says APD often report a history of such symptoms as truancy, running away from home, frequently lying, theft, arson, and deliberate destruction of property early adolescence. As adults, people with APD show irresponsible behavior, such as working inconsistently breaking laws, being irritable, and physically aggressive, defaulting on debts, being reckless, and impulsive, and neglecting to plan ahead. Who hang on, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put all that out there, but baby, when I say what I say, I know what I know. Look at, I want y'all, some of y'all with these toxic people, look at their background. How many times they done been to jail? Or how many times they done been to prison? And I want you to look at their background of what they went to prison for and what they went to jail for. Why do they keep going back to jail or prison for the same things? They show little regard for truth and little remorse for their misdeeds, even when those actions hurt family and friends. Narcissists will hurt their wives. They will hurt their husband. They will hurt their children. They don't care about anybody but self. They do not care. And that's why I say they are demonically possessed because they don't see that they are destroying their family. They are destroying their friends. They think that they are hurting the person when they're truly hurting people that care about them. But something in their mind is telling them otherwise. I'm going to be jumping back biblically to and uh, spiritually and flesh. Men are about five times more likely than are women to meet the criteria of APD. About three quarters of people with APD meet the diagnostic criteria for another disorder with substance abuse being very common. Not surprisingly, then high rates of APD are observed in drug and alcohol rehabilitation facilities about three quarters of convicted felons meet this diagnostic criteria for apd and i'm going to go over the uh criteria for this for antisocial personality disorder it is at the age at age at least 18 evidence of conduct disorder before the age of 15 pervasive pattern of disregard for the rights of others 
since age of 15 has shown by at least three of the following repeated law breaking deceitfulness lying and impulsive impulsiveness irritability and aggressiveness reckless disregard for own safety and that of others irresponsibility as seen in unreliable employment or financial history now when it comes to irresponsibility as seen in unreliable employment with employment most narcissists when we talk about convert narcissists when they get you to that mold and point where they start to uh, destroy you at the point where you know you you are enemies everything that they're doing is not to you know come to a conclusion and resolve and we're gonna be okay now it's, it's it's always chaos they will never be uh, a person that takes accountability they will never be a person that you can depend on it's always gonna be oh i gotta go do this oh i gotta go do that oh I Anything that you ask them to do, like, hey, we need to go take care of such and such, or I got to go do such. This is what my nurse used to do. I'm like, in the morning, I got to go take such and such. It, it could be one of my kids, and it, it, it was. My son, he used to have to do stuff before he got ready to leave for the military. And I used to be like, hey, I need to use the car in the morning. We got to go handle such and such in the morning. This fool would call. He would wait. He'd get to work and wait probably like 6 or 7 o'clock or later and be like, um... You don't be mad, but I got to stay over. And I'm like, you got to stay over. Why you ain't tell me this before you left? Like, why you didn't know you had to stay over for you? I said, I got to use the car and I got to I got to handle something in the morning. Well, you want me to lose my chances? The fool be lying. You understand? The fool be lying. Okay. So irresponsibility as seen in unreliable employment or financial history. I can tell y'all for five years, I took care of my NARC because my NARC did not have a job. Did not have a job. Could not keep a job. Worked temp, 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 temp for five years. And in a marriage, this is what you're supposed to do. It don't matter who working. I'm working. That's why I said we took turns. But it was me at first taking care of him, taking care of everything. Did he do his part to bring some income in? Yes, he did. But I still was the breadwinner. Okay. When tables turn and I began to be ill and need to depend on him. Okay. That's when they start to disregard and, and they already doing this, but it come, the mask come off. They do it out in the open. They don't care anymore then. They don't care. They're like, okay, I'm taking care of everything. Ain't no need for me to hide. Either you're going to deal with it or not, or you're going to be homeless. If they have that much control over you. All right. So some of you are probably out here with some of these narcissists and you've been taking care of them. They don't have a job or they bringing in pennies and scrub to contribute or whatever it is. Some of y'all are out here working while they at home babysitting. You want an in-house babysitter. Let that man go to work. Okay. So we still talking about antisocial personality disorder. We are talking about disorder of things that they could possibly have that you are not aware of. Number seven, lack of remorse. We already know this as I was talking about um, me being in the hospital and this fool just sitting up there looking at me while I'm having a full mental breakdown. And looking at me like, oh, well. Don't care. Show no remorse, no compassion, no nothing. <laughs> Highlighting y'all. Hold on. It's other stuff. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do another video on some other stuff. It's a... Um, it's a case that I'm studying right now that has to do with APD. And uh, it's going to take us into uh, genetics. I'm probably free to cover that. No, let me see because I do have it on now. About polymorphism. Yep. 
All right, let's do it. We in here. All right, let's talk about interactions of genes in social environment. Major study supports the role of the social environment as a key factor in APD. Parenting qualities of negativity, inconsistency, and low warmth predicts antisocial behavior. Quote in Marshall and Cook, 1999. The stuff that I'm talking about when I get off this live, I am going to put my references in here. Okay. All righty. Substantial perspective research also shows that border social factors, including poverty and exposure to violence, predict antisocial behaviors. Quote in Low Bear, hey, 1997. That's why a lot of people, they say it's your environment. Uh, I was infected by my environment. Why I have this up there? I can't see y'all. A lot of people like to say um, they grew up in a drug infested area or their mom was a prostitute or their mom were crackheads and stuff like this. So they grew up around certain areas and their environment is um, is a part of why they doing what they doing and all this and that. <sighs> my God, my God, my God. It says, for example, among adolescents with conduct disorder, those who are improvised are twice as likely to develop APD as are those from higher socioeconomic status backgrounds. There's a little question that childhood adversity can set the stage for the development of APD. Now, this is why I say when you're dealing with a narcissist, you're just looking at toxicity and the stuff that they encounter with you. My, keep in mind, we are fighting spiritual warfare. Now, if you're really about saving souls and really being an advocate for mental health illness and you're not doing this to just to be content to bully, to gossip, and to destroy a person, you're really going to get the back history of the mental illness that is going on with this person because we really out here to save souls at the end of the day. So something is seriously wrong mentally, all right? And a lot of people don't know and a lot of people are aware, all right? So we need to constantly advocate mental health mental health issues and disorders and also provide recommendations so these people can get the adequate help that they need. That's what it's about. Do they want help? Do they know where to go and get help, okay? The effects, where am I? The effects of early adversity might be particularly negative for those who are genetically vulnerable to APD. When you're going down to mental health illness, you think it just started with you? When you're experiencing abuse or alcoholism or being in toxic relationships or being in abusive relationships, you thought it just started with you? This is witchcraft. It started way before your ancestors already went through this, okay? There was witchcraft and sorcery stuff work already planted in your generation. You got to dig deep, all right? So it says across multiple studies about polymorphism, we are talking about genetics of the MAOA gene has been found to predict psychopath among males who had experienced childhood physical or sexual abuse or maternal rejection. You have no idea of the magnitude of witchcraft and sorcery upon these people as i say i talk in the physical realm in the spiritual realm excuse me you got to break it down oh excuse me y'all one more one i ain't getting no water you got to break it down spiritually and physically not saying that all narcissists have been abused but all narcissists, they have went through something in their childhood. 
This is facts. Scientific facts. Something happened to them throughout their childhood. Something happened throughout genetics. Something happened throughout their ancestors. Something happened throughout the history, the background, the family background, the family tree. You got to dig deep. You ever hear me go to the doctor, the doctor say, have anybody in your family ever suffered with diabetes, heart attacks, all these type of disease, all these type of, they ask you this stuff. Because you think it just starts with you. You're trying to figure out, why do I have mental health issues? Why am I dealing with stuff like this? It's cancer. All this stuff. It, baby, it didn't start with you. It didn't start with you. But it's going to end with you. It's going to end with you because you are spiritually awakened. And you have finally adapted into your purpose. And you know the spiritual warfare that is attacking you, your family, your friends, your loved one, or anybody that you come in contact with. Are you ready to step up and be the warrior that God wants you to be? That's what you got to ask yourself. Hey, Scully, how you doing? Say, hey, Crystal, God bless, God bless. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for coming in. So we now know that we have narcissists. We have mental health issues. We're talking about demonic, sorcery, demons, witchcraft. We're talking about genetics. We're talking about history. We're talking about Spiritually, biblically, it's all connected. All in the circle of life. This ain't nothing that just happened. Polymorphism, genetic variations that result in multiple forms or types of individual within species. Let's take rape, for instance. Somebody that probably has got raped in their childhood. By a family member, loved one, or whoever. And let's say they never got any type of therapy. Any type of counseling. No type of help. Deep down, they are still emotionally and mentally dealing with what happened. So when certain things are talked about, when certain things are brought to the light, it can be triggering for those type of people. The things that I talk about are going to be triggering because you may very so well be experienced them or have experienced them. But in order to heal, we must deal with the inner core problem. That's fine, Scully. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. When you come in, you come in. I'm good to see you. Say, I'm about getting some answers and a little relief physically. Amen. You've been at the doctors a lot lately. I'm going to be praying for you. I hope everything is all right. And you getting some uh, relief physically. Amen. Get some relief. God is good. Amen. 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 So it's deeper than just dealing with toxic people and bashing them and talking about what we went through. Anybody can get up here and talk about their past. But you need to be tapped into your purpose of why you went through things in your past. Because everything happened for a reason we are here to save souls we are here to save lives that's why i say we when we mad we say things like i ain't with that narcissist no more i'm glad whoever got them you can have them 
But I'm praying for these nurses. I'm praying for people with mental health issues because I don't want somebody to be in a relationship or be married to somebody who did those type of things to me and they go do it to the next person. That's where we come in to bring awareness. Don't be ashamed if you have mental health issues. I have mental health issues. Diagnosed mental. MDD, SDD. Insomnia, anxiety. General. But do you see me doing out here doing evil things to people? Do you see me trying to harm myself? That's why a lot of people say, Chris, I can't tell you, you suffer with depression. I can't tell you have, I can't tell you have SAD seasonal depression. It's the God in me. It's the God in me. Hey, it's the God in me. If I can do it, you can do it, but you got to want to do it. The first thing is to retrain your mind. Retrain your mind, and then the rest will follow, meaning the body. You are welcome, Scully. The rest will follow. All right. Psychological risk, insensitivity to threat and to others' emotions. People with psychopathy seem unable to learn from experience. They often repeat misconduct that has been harshly punished, even if it resulted in jail time. Don't look like, oh, they oh, they about their life. Oh, they keep going to jail. Oh, they keep doing this. Something is wrong. Why do they keep going to jail for the same thing? Why are narcissists out here in a cycle doing the same thing? They're so smart that they're studying us to imitate us and use it against us to make us feel insecure, drag us down through the mud, but they're not smart enough to know to do better. They're, excuse me, they're not smart enough. I got to get some water, y'all. Hold on. <clears throat> they're not smart enough to know, hey, this is wrong. <clears throat> That's where the mental come in at. It ain't about no street code and all of this. Oh, I'm a boss, oh, gang gang and all of that. You a fool. You a fool to think otherwise. Yeah, I said you a fool. I can't stand to see somebody keep going to jail for the same thing. Narcissists, I remember my narc, he would call me from work. That's how I know it's this masculine stuff that's going on. He would call me from work and literally have me on speakerphone and letting the people at his job know, like, how many times I've been to jail, what I did, boy, the street, boy, I'm telling it hard. I'm like, a dummy he ain't getting no rank for keep going back to jail repeated misconduct that has been harshly punished even if it resorted in jail time people with psychopathy seems unable to learn from experience that's why it's so easy for us to pick up on what they are doing Once we get flesh out the way, you ain't gonna know what a narcissist is until you get flesh out the way, because then you're gonna know something is spiritually not right. 
Ding, 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 ding. Something is not right. I literally have family members suffer mental health issues. Very so much aware. And it's not just one who everybody know. It's more than one. It's more than two. It's more than three. People tend to cover up the worldly world things to throw you off when really they need to be handling and dealing with the mental, the inner. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. It's only so long that you can fool and trick people. If you are with a person that's constantly going back and back, back and forth to jail, you need to question yourself. Why are you with them? Why are you with them? It says they seem immune to the anxiety that keeps most of us, most of us from breaking the law, lying or injuring others. Hmm. My God, I'm going to share my screen because now we're about to get in bo uh, borderline personality disorder. Mm, 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 mm. They got to want the help. They got to want the help, y'all. And I think that's how we get stuck in it so long because we look in that flesh and we love them. And we're trying to be misfixed. We want to fix everything to get everything to work. I just want peace in my home. I just want peace in my marriage. I just want peace. Why we just can't live our life right? We can, but someone is either lying about their mental health or they are unaware. They're either lying or they are unaware. And I'm telling you right now, if you are a person in a relationship and involving yourself in a relationship with somebody and you are married to them or then got married to them, that is not cool to do that to them that is not cool on any level i didn't get diagnosed with stuff until i had cancer so that's when i got diagnosed but like the anxiety and the adhd baby i had all of that at the age of 15 Anger issues, anger management, all of that stuff. But to talk about these that are more like mental health is mental health. But I'm going to just say these are more serious. More on a serious level. Versus the ones that I deal with. That's right, Scully. Not cool at all. I think that should be talked about. And if you're dealing with a narcissist who have been jumping houses, as we was talking about uh, antisocial personalities, when we were talking about runaways and stuff back in their childhood, why do you feel it's so easy for a narcissist to jump houses? Who jumps? What I was talking about yesterday about demonic demons, spirits, jumping demonic spirits jumping house jumping spirits house to house to house each house they go to they're bringing more demons and more demons and more demons if you are spirit if you are not spiritually in tune you will not know it's biblical 
How can a person jump relationship after relationship after relationship? How can a person that is married and not divorced jump relationship after relationship? Why you won't just take care of that divorce and end it and then move into another relationship? We got to pay attention and look like, why is it so easy for somebody to jump house, jump how they're not stable? That's a pattern of showing them not being stable and taking accountability as an adult. House to house to house to house to house. Woman to woman to woman to woman. Man to man to man to man. Thank you, Scully. It's the God in me. I give all glory be to God. I give all glory be to God. So now we are in person, uh, excuse me, now we are in borderline personality disorder. Is a mental health condition characterized by a pervasive pattern of instability, interpersonal relationships, self-image and emotions. Individuals with BPD often experience intense and unstable relationships. Frequent mood swings and a disordered sense of self. You've been dealing with a narcissist or you've been dealing with a toxic person. Baby, you know about the mood swings. They this way one day and they that way the other day. Plenty of videos that I was telling y'all and caught my narc talking to himself. Who are you talking to? Demonically, who are you talking to? What spirits are you talking to? And what are those spirits telling you to do? What are they saying to you? The term borderline originally referred to the belief that these individuals were on the border between neurosis and psychosis but the content oh lord contemporary y'all know how my words get contemporary understanding views of bpd as a distinct personality disorder that's why i need to take my butt back to school <laughs> all right but this is what i love this is what I do. All right. So the key features of borderline personality disorder include, let's go over them, intense and unstable relationships. What I just said with narcissists, they jump house, what they call, what society, society is calling the new supply. No, let's call it what it is. They jump from relationship to relationship, woman to woman or man to man. Once you figure out or you get on them that something is not right and you begin to correct them, they don't like correction. They do not like correction. They like chaos. Correction of righteousness to do right, they do not like that. Intense and unstable relationships. People with BPD may have difficulty establishing and maintaining stable relationships, whether that you are in a relationship or you are in a marriage. If the mental health inner core has not been dealt with, the relationship is not going to be at ease. The marriage is not going to be at ease. That's why you see not very many narcissists on YouTube or on social media who are coming out and bringing awareness that are married and talking about their diagnosis and educating and bringing awareness. It's only one man that I follow that is a narcissist and has been going to see a psychiatrist for years, I believe four or five years, and is, is married to his wife and have children and changing his life. It is possible. But they must want the help. They must want to deal with inner self problems. They may have a fear of abandonment. Look back. Do you know their family members? Do you know where they from? 
Have you been around their family members? Been around gatherings? Have you met aunties, uncles, brothers, and sisters? I mean bloodline, not street. Oh, this is my bro, this is my sister. I mean actual blood family members. See, when you sit down and begin to talk, narcissists, they don't like to talk about inner core things. It irritates the spirit. It irritates the demon inside of them. That demon get the shaking. You don't see some of them, you touch their hand or you get by them, they begin to shake. If any of y'all have been to prophetic churches where you go get prophesized and you see people getting the shaking and the pastor begin to preach and teach and casting them demons out and your, your, your nerves begin to shake, it begins to shift. Something in there is beginning to be disturbed. Because you are bringing light to what is going on. So they may fear, they may have fear of abandonment. They got mommy and daddy issues, and I'm not saying that to be funny. It is what it is. When you are growing up, you are a child, you know, adoles not adolescent, but teenagers, you know, you are a child, teenager, adolescent, growing on up. You say mommy, daddy, mom, whatever you say, you know, whatever type of language you was brought on to, to what you call your parents. But I say mommy and daddy issues because some of them have mommy and daddy issues. Some of them probably was taken from their parents at a young age. You see it all the time. Kids get in trouble. They have to move across town or go live with an aunt or uncle or somebody at a young age to receive a better lifestyle or they may be taken out the home as we was talking back in antisocial personality we were talking about some of these kids probably have been sexually abused drugs you never you need to know the back history and if a woman or a man whether this is your significant other or your spouse and they don't want to sit down and talk about stuff like that then you have a serious problem i am like you either going to talk we're going to talk about this within the home and do this together or you're going to have to go seek professional help i used to always give my narc this option i'm like if you don't want to talk to me and talk about this stuff okay because you're looking at me like oh you don't know what you're talking oh i know what i'm talking about it was embedded in me from birth it's that spirit inside of you it's like oh uh-uh get away from her Get away from her. Uh-uh. Get away from her. We got control over you. We tell you what to do. That's how them little demons be talking to them. Uh-uh. Don't listen to her. Get away from her. She lying to you. She hates you. She don't love you. That's that demon in them whispering in their ear, <coughs> telling them things. And that spirit get to shaking because they know the God in me. You understand? That's why we as chosen ones, we as the lighters, survivors and thrivers, when you get around certain people and you begin to talk, people try to come against you and you got to not look at flesh. You got to look at the God in you, the God fearing spirit of the Holy Spirit within you is what they don't like. It is what that flesh in them is getting irritated. They get to tweaking like somebody on drugs. Pay attention to body language. It's serious. Whoop, not Siri. I said it's serious. Go away, Siri. But they're dealing with inner child things that you are not aware of. And it's sad. Because we love them, we care about them, we want them to seek adequate help, but they must want it. They must want it. Just like choosing to serve Christ Jesus or choosing to serve Satan. All right, they have a fear of abandonment, engage in impulsive behaviors to avoid being left alone. 
Disordered self image. Individuals with BPD with this bipolar personality disorder, what we are talking about, often struggle with a fluctuation and unclear sense of self. They may experience rapid changes in identity. Worldly word. Values and goals. They always got to be in superior. If they are not in superior, they're going to make you think they're in superior. They want you to admire them. They want you to congratulate them. Ooh, I got a raise at work. Congratulations. That's good, babe. Ooh, I'm going here. They will lie. Why lie? I pause, y'all, because this is my life. This is stuff that I've experienced and went through. And it's not a joke. They try to fix themselves up a certain way for people to acknowledge them and validate them. Like, why are you smoking? Why are you drinking? You know what smoking and drinking, you know, you know what happened before, you know, you know, you know what happened. I'm not going to say what happened, you know, I'll tell my, my bees, my part, but you know, it's certain things I'm not going to say, but I'm like, you know what happened, you know. You know, drinking with calls. All right. So why would you do that? They get around certain people. That's why I say when you are in the light and you are doing good, stay around positive people. Stay around people that are going to inspire you and lift you up. Don't keep going around, hanging around the same people that's drugs, smoking weed, sex, doing all of this demonic stuff. Because all you're doing is going back. You're going to get cleansed. That's just like people going to church, repenting, getting up there at the pulpit. Lord, forgive me, repenting for everything that I did. And then they turn right back around, go back to the hood, go back to the streets, go back to smoking, popping pills, drinking, doing all this stuff. What was your purpose of going to church and repenting if you was going to turn right back around as soon as you left church, begin to cuss, begin? What was the point? What was the point? You must want change. They got to want change. That's why I say forgive them. Constantly pray for them because a lot of them are not in the position to pray for themselves. Intercede for them. Even in the midst when I was mad, y'all, you hear me mad when you are going through this stuff with people that suffer with mental illness or these narcissists and you are mad, you are furious at them. You don't want to pray for them. You are hurt. You are sad. Why do they put me through this? Why do they take? I'm so glad that God will use another vessel to say you must pray for your husband. You must pray for your wife. You must pray for your brothers and sisters. You must pray for your mother or your father. You must pray for your auntie, uncle, or your cousins. Anybody, you must intercede and pray on the, on the behalf of them while they are in the darkness. I know what it feels like to be in the darkness. You feel lost. You feel like nobody don't love you. You feel like nobody don't care about you. You feel like somebody always talking about you. You feel like somebody always against you when you really need to be working on inner self. If you deal with the demons that are inside of you, you won't be caring or worrying about what XYZ had to say about you because you know you more than anybody else. Stop giving people room to come against you. Take accountability for your actions and for yourself. Seek help and guidance. Don't be afraid. If you have family or friends or loved ones that are going through stuff like this, don't be afraid to tell them like, hey, I think like you have a problem. I'm not trying to be funny. Like figure out a way to come at them. Like my family, we are real, real blunt. So we are not, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. That's why I give off like people think that I'm mean, but I'm not mean. I just mean what I say. And I'm very blunt. I'm very direct. Ain't no need to sugarcoat something. I'm going to say what it is. It is what it is. It ain't what it ain't going to be. 
I'm not one of them people that trying to sugarcoat something to ease it on you. I'm going to tell you bluntly exactly what, hey, I feel like something is seriously going on with you, whether you talk to family and friends about it and try to get some help or you go seek professional help. But there is something going on. And ask them, are you aware that you do X, Y, Z? Are you aware that you have this problem? Because sometimes they like they won't remember or they'll go back in child mode and they'll be like, I don't know why I did that. I don't, and they don't know, they don't remember. But they tend to imitate and do things to seek attention for cover up. They tend to get around certain people to put off this image for cover up. When I see right between the lines, I don't care how you do your hair. I don't care what clothes you wear, what car you drive. I don't care what kind of people you sit with, talk with every day, baby. I see right through you. I know you're hurting. I know you're hurting. I know you're screaming inside. But you got to want it. You got to want the help. So that's why I say pay attention. They do this disordered self-image. Individuals with BPD often struggle with a fluctuated and unclear sense of self. They may experience rapid changes in identity, values, and goals. Hmm. No, if they don't respect your values or your goals, they ain't going to respect or have none for themselves. They're going to try to throw you out because you on track and doing what you need to do. Instead of just coming out and like, hey, I need help. Or can you, you know, recommend me to someone that can help me because I don't feel like I don't feel comfortable uh, talking to you. Like I used to always tell my nerd. If you are very, very sensitive with something that has happened to you or went, whatever you went through, I don't know. I can't help you if you don't talk to me. I can't recommend you to somebody if you don't talk. But what you're not going to do is attack me. You're not going to attack me because you have inner self problems that you're not dealing with. That's not going to happen. All right. Impulsive behavior. Impulsivity is a common trait of BPD leading individuals to engage in activities such as substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating, or risky sexual behaviors without considering the potential consequences. Like we was talking about guilt and shame. Did we talk about guilt and shame yesterday or the day before yesterday? Impulsive behaviors is somebody that constantly do something and then they'll say they don't remember why they did it or why they done it or whatever. I talked to y'all about my second oldest son. You know, when I had him going through uh, counseling and therapy, he has uh, impulsive disorder. Growing up throughout his younger childhood, adole well, not adolescence, but uh, teenage years up until adolescence. He got better as the old as he got older, but he still have um, some work. He got a lot of work to do. That anger is something. Where is that anger and that frustration coming from? Why are you so angry? Why are you doing things without thinking? Impulsive behavior, people do things without thinking. Like a just because. Oh, I'm going to bully you. I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to go demise this person. Oh, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go rob them still. I'm going to punch. I'm going to fight. I'm going to beat you. That's impulsive behavior. Doing things without thinking. There is no thought process behind of why they do what they do. And impulsive people with impulsive behavior can be very dangerous. They can be dangerous within to themselves and to others. And it's sad to see children, teenagers, walking around with impulsive behavior. It's sickening. Like, come on. If you don't catch it while they're a child, when they get older, what do you think? That's why we have so many mass murders. That's why we have so many things going across the news that is going on. And people look like, wow, these people are really sick. No, these people been screaming out for help and nobody helped them. Nobody recommended them to the right people. Nobody was there for them. 
in society. They just went out in society and just they just out there working for the devil. That's why I tell you, don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your children. I know you'll get tired. You'll get tired. You'll get tired, honey. But stay in a business. I'll tell my kid, you ain't got no business until you get up out of my house. You ain't got no business until you get up out of my house. Until then, I'm in your business. And I'm going to teach you right from wrong. We got to go all the way back. This stuff of mental health and narcissists did not just start. Thanks for coming by, Scully. Said bye. I have to go. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Okay. You have to go way back. Genetics. History. It all plays a part. You just can't look at toxic narcissist is more to it than that okay so extreme emotional swings extreme emotional swings happy sad mad laughing outbursts like doing all of this within the hour Intense and rapid mood swings are characteristics of BPD. Individuals may experience episodes of intense anger, anxiety, or depression that last for only a few hours a day. Things that happen within the hour. That's too many mood swings to be going in like, oh, I'm mad, I'm happy, I'm sad. Now I'm up. I'm laughing. Oh, now I'm back sad, I'm depressed. Oh, now I want to fight. Oh, I don't like her. Oh, like all of these emotions. You having all these mood swings. Chronic feeling or emptiness. Chronic feeling or emptiness. People with BPD may fre frequently feel a sense of emptiness and boredom, leading them to seek constant stimulation or engage in impulsive activities. Like I was telling you, narcissists, they begin to hang around people that do the same thing that they do, ungodly things. They think that it's fun. If you can ask a person outside of drinking, smoking, doing drugs, sexual activities with multiple people, gossiping, what else do your life have? What, what else is it about you that you can do other than that? Oh, you think that's fun. Oh, you think you're going to be bored if you don't do these type of things. Oh, you feel say it when you're not around people if you know that narcissists they always have to be in a group or be around people just like demons they come in groups they can't survive on their own pay attention to people that have to move in groups they can't stand 10 toes by themselves they can't move on their own they always got to be in a group or else they feel bored. Inappropriate and intense anger. Individuals with BPD may struggle to control, may struggle to control their anger and may express it inappropriately, sometimes leading to conflicts with others. Gaslighting. Pick bullying. Gaslighting is, is a form of bullying, picking with you. Doing things to somebody to get a reaction out of you in a negative way. Just mad and don't like people for no reason. Oh, I just don't like them. Oh, I just don't like them just because I don't have no reason. I just don't like them. You that evil and that envious and have that much hatred against somebody that you don't even know. Or know and you just envious and jealous of them and trying to imitate them. Which one is it? Why are you so angry? You being angry and not dealing with your inner car allows you to do activities and get into things that you don't need to be doing. 
which makes you look pretty bad. You look bad out here. It ain't cute. It ain't fine. It ain't giving you no rank in the streets. You look like a whole fool. Paranoid thoughts or disassociation. Some individuals with BPD may experience transient psychotic like symptoms such as paranoid thoughts or episode or disso disassociation where they feel detached from their thoughts or identity. This is what discard comes in at. With narcissism, this is where the discard comes in at. And you will say, oh, they will be with a new supplier probably three months, six months, eight, eight weeks to three months to six months, five months. And then they circle. Once they come back to reality, remember, bipolar dis a bipolar personality disorder. Once they come back to reality after they done went on and meeting that new supplier with that other person, that other woman, or that other man. Then they start thinking about, you know, they get in their right mind. They try to circle back and come back to you. You're like, hold on. You've been gone almost two to three months. You just left and disappeared. Out of sight, out of mind. Don't know nothing. And now you back. They come back. Now you back and talking as if you just left yesterday. Something is wrong. Okay, something is wrong. And you need to pay attention to stuff like this. It is important to note that everyone with borderline personality disorder will exhibit all of these symptoms. And the severity of symptoms can vary widely among individuals. BPD is typically diagnosed by mental health professionals based on a through evaluation of individuals' behavior, emotions, and interpersonal relationships. Treatment often involves a combination of psychotherapy, medications, and support to help individuals manage their symptoms to improve their overall functioning. All righty. Did I stop it? Let me see. Okay. Let me put it back up. I don't know why I took that down. Let me go back, y'all. Okay. Now you got some homework. Now I'm about to give you some homework. Cause you ain't really learning it just from just from listening. You need to be taking notes. You need to study. You need to do your own research. Anything that I tell you, don't take my word from it. Go and do your research on it. Go and do your own research. I know what I'm talking about from experiences. Then I'm bringing you the book form to show you. To back up what I'm talking about. All right. So now you got some homework to do. Everything that I went over in here. Um, let me see. Whew. I don't think I had his link in here. I don't think so because I just did this this morning. Uh, but like the stuff that I read from you from my book, like all this stuff I already went through in school. I was basically going back in my notes because when I got this, I'm like, "Ooh, it's getting deep. It's getting deep." Like I've already been through this. I'm just bringing awareness to it on the, on my channel.
This water in my back is killing me. Come on, thing. Let me see. I notice every time I try, there it is. I'm waiting on something to pop up. Y'all can't see it just yet. Just a moment while we make our Microsoft sway. Well, I wish it would hurry up. I'm going to put this link in the chat. So you have all this information. Okay. And I'm going to pin it. I mean, the more that you educate yourself on this, the said things that I've been talking about, you'll take flesh out the way, like the hurt and the pain. You won't be hurt by it no more. You'll know, like, hey, it's really sad that they, they, they need help. They really need help. E -e -e -e. I'm on a notepad. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all enjoyed this live stream today. Been on here two hours. I'm about to get ready to wrap it up. We're about to go over this last worksheet. So I'm going to pin the worksheet there. Let me test it, make sure that the link works. Mm -hmm. All righty. I'm, I'm going to share my screen to this one. Let me stop that one. Mm -hmm. It's Friday, baby. It's Friday. What y'all got to do today, honey? I'm about to get some exercise in after this. I'll be on TikTok. Wait, did it change it? Am I froze? Okay. Is my phone not on it yet? Let me refresh. All right. Refresh had to refresh my phone. Um, I'm gonna make this big on the what I'm showing and put me at the up there. All right. Oh, excuse me. All right, now we are on the homework part. Yes, I'm going to leave you with some homework, baby, because you need to do the work. I'm doing the work for me. You need to do the work for yourself as well. All right, you need to know the facts. Okay, you need to get the research behind what somebody is saying. Don't always just believe what somebody is saying to you just because of what they experienced. Everybody is different. Everybody's testimony is different. Everybody being with a narcissist or in toxic relationships or a marriage is different. You got to understand that we're giving, providing you information based off our experience. Also, that's why I like to come in with the facts, okay? Whether it's biblical or it's physical evidence in psychology, science, all right? If you didn't know, I am a science major. I love it. All right, so recognizing covert narcissists, a self-reflection worksheet for survivors.
survivors because we are survivors and thrivers y'all love that bad say <laughs> i forget his name but y'all know who i'm talking about all right so on here we have understanding your homework assignment is for you to define and understand what is covert narcissism i want you to take this link that i provided i want you to get your journal and i want you to go in research and look up covert narcissism and write the definition so what you're gonna do you're gonna take a moment to research and understand the characteristics of covert narcissism mm -hmm. I got the message. Okay. B, common traits. Common traits. List traits commonly associated with covert narcissism. Example, victim, mentality, passive aggressiveness, manipulation. Come up with the traits. Like we was going over, we were talking about these traits. We was talking about genetics, everything that we was talking about, all right? Number two, reflecting on past experience. You heard about things that I'm telling you about that I experienced. Go off of what you have experienced, what you have endured, because yours may be very so, yours may be very so, y'all keep getting dang text messages, my sister's them in this group chat but yours may be very so different from another person okay journaling what we're doing we're journaling describe specific situations or behaviors that felt manipulative or emotionally draining remember how i used to talk about how my narc used to always come in the house and just have this sad look like i'm oh, dude if you don't want to be here don't be here if every time you come in this house and you feel stressed or sad which we know they was putting on the act so they can get so you can feel pity for them then why be in a place where you don't feel loved or care about or feel sad or just oh i'm tired of coming here no go where you need to go okay gaslighting awareness recall instances where you may have been gaslit or made to doubt your perception of reality remember while i was talking about you the experience when i was in the hospital and i came to my sense and i said you are the problem of why i keep having these anxiety attacks anxiety attack after anxiety can't breathe all of that okay assessing relationship dynamics power ambulance reflect on whether there was a noticeable power imbalance excuse me imbalance of your relationship i began to change remember i told y'all at the beginning of my relationship we was doing the same things club and then party and drinking and all this stuff in the streets we both work but we both live a night life we both live the nightlife. As time progressed throughout the marriage, I began to change. I began to grow. I began to elevate. I began to get closer to Christ Jesus. He did not. He wanted to stay in that same mentality. Okay. So there was definitely an imbalance there. All right. Emotional manipulation. You don't love me. You don't care about me. Identify instances where emotions were manipulated to control or guilt trip you. Why would somebody say things that they know they lying? Like, obviously, you didn't love yourself because you want to put yourself in situations of doing things that you was doing. You were showing that you do not love yourself and you tried to project that onto me, trying to manipulate me. Don't let people do that to you recognize patterns and behavior consistency checks you're gonna see them you see the red flags you see the patterns but you're looking at flesh and thinking oh it can change oh it's gonna get better okay we got through this that was hard that you know that wasn't the hardest thing you know that we ever went through so i'm gonna let it slide we're gonna get uh oh -uh. no ham no ham no turkey <laughs> one of my cousins you say that no ma'am no ham no turkey okay consistency 
they have a pattern they have a pattern and if you pay attention you will see the pattern i sit up and i see things all the time like this feel like deja vu because it is a pattern that's reminding you okay look for patterns of behavior over time rather than isolation incidents devaluation and idolization identify your boundaries what we talked about setting your boundaries if you feel like you feel your own boundaries like oh uh, girl i let him call Oof. dude i answered the phone for I, I just i just had to talk to her. or girl i just had to talk to him oh i just had to let him come over oh girl we're gonna spend some time we're gonna talk about you know try to work through this don't fall for that crap because all they do is going to set you back on your journey. It's going to set you back on your journey. And they know that. They know that. Okay? Trust in your intuition. When you set those boundaries, stick to them. I understand when you first start setting your boundaries and you first, you know, been discarded and you're doing the no contact. It's going to be hard because you're going to be experiencing all the trauma bonds. You're going to be experiencing all the stuff that you once did that you thought, oh, this person was just the perfect person for me. But I'm here to tell you, stick to your guns, stand 10 toes down, set them boundaries, boss up. Don't fall for that crap. Don't fall for it because they have a child like a toddler mentality, just like you'll punish your child. Like I said, no, you going in your room, time out, do not come out. And the child be like, but mom ain't going to do it again. And then you lie, okay, come on. And then they go right back five minutes later and do the same thing again. Mm -mm. Stick to your gun. Stick to your intuition. Boss up. Stand on business. And make them. Make them live their life that they think they're about. Make them stand on it. Okay? Because if you don't, they're going to constantly keep doing the same thing, the same thing. Like, why change if they can get away, uh, get away with what they're doing to you? There's no point to change if you're allowing them to constantly come back and do the same thing over and over and over again. They're not going to learn. Okay. Uh, reflect on whether your intuition raised concerns about the person's intentions or behaviors. Validation. I'm going to tell you right now, we talked about it. Oh, how my hair look? Baby, you know you look good, girl. Well, you know you look fine. You don't need nobody to tell you, oh, you look fine. Oh, you look good. Oh, I like this. You need validation for yourself. You need to understand that you are a queen or you are a king and you know whose you are. You understand? Your strength, your validation come within inner self. Don't let society fool you or you being envious or in moderation of looking at somebody else or what they're doing. Don't, don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. The world has got us screwed up. What we putting on lashes, we piling all this makeup on our face, we putting all this fake weave in. Our, we covering up all the realness with fakeness. People don't know who people are no more. We don't know what you look like or what you do because you got the fake teeth, you got the fake lash, you got the fake hair. You got all this stuff on you covering up the realness of who you really are. I'm not saying it's not a I'm not saying that don't dress up and feature. That's fine. But don't do it to the point of where you catfishing people. Nobody don't know who the heck you are because God is makeup on your face. Jesus. Who then we start taking? I told y'all you start taking all this stuff off. You don't reel the man in with all you know. You in the club or wherever you wherever you met the man at or met the woman at. Then you get home and you begin to take all these layers off, peeling back like an onion. You begin to remove all these layers, and these people, these nurses, or these people in these types of relationships, they be looking like that ain't what I signed up for. That ain't what I signed up for. <clears throat> your hair was long when I met you. Or now your hair short. <clears throat> or you had long hair, curly hair, and now you bald head. Okay? Etc. So understand your feelings and perceptions are valid, even if they are dismissed in the P. 
pass. Setting boundaries, identify your boundaries, list the boundaries that were violated or ignored in the relationship. Why were they ignored? Did you take the necessary steps? I said, I don't want to talk to you. I said, no contact. I said, do not pull up at my residence. Ask yourself, list your boundaries. Where is it that you are allowing this person to manipulate you and come in? Is it the sex? Definitely, if you still having sex with a narcissist child, you ain't even ready to heal. You understand? You're not even prepared to heal if you are still having sexual contact with this person, even if y'all are in the same house. No contact means no sexual netting. Benito netting. Out of sight, out of mind. Control yourself. That's one thing about narcissists. They are sex addicts. We're going to get into pornography, watching porn, sex addicts, porn on social media, porn on Facebook, porn in inboxes. They are sex addicts. That's why they have multiple bodies. You don't want all them bodies and all them spirits, all them fluids intertwining with each other. That's where all these diseases come from. Cut these people off. You understand? Cut these people off. It may hurt now, but in the future, later on, you set your boundaries and you stand 10 toes down and you mean business on what you're doing with yourself and your life will change. It will get better. It will get better. You got to believe. Okay? Um, And don't be doing nothing to try to prove to nobody. This ain't nothing to prove to nobody. You need to prove it to yourself. You can't be consistent in setting boundaries and doing things if you can't even follow them. Your own, you can't follow your own rules. All right. So identify the boundaries, list the boundaries that were violated or ignored in the relationship. Be future boundaries. Consider that boundaries. Consider the boundaries you want to establish in future relationships. A lot of people be <laughs> A lot of people be saying, "Ooh, when when she when she find another man or get with another man, he gonna catch it." No, he ain't, cause she gonna be truly healed. Or ooh, when he find another woman, get with another woman, that woman gonna catch it because they gonna be so strict and all this. Pa-. No, when you are truly healed, baby, you gonna already establish that you ain't even gonna leave room. For you to be even in those type of situations, you're not even going to entertain the bull crap because it's the waste of your time. Why entertain something that you know ain't even fit to go nowhere? I ain't fit to sit up here kiki ha ha with you and all that date you and all when I know it's not going nowhere. I'm going to let you know off real. Let them know this is temporary. See, a lot of people get lied to, like all these movement stuff I be watching. These women, they be married. Oh, which, which, oh, reasonable doubt. I think I'm watching, y'all, I'm watching so many different shows. I'm watching, I just got finished watching The Johnsons. Now I'm watching Reasonable Doubt, and then I'm catching myself back up on P-Valley because it's supposed to be a new season coming up. But on Reasonable Doubt, the lady, the lawyer, she was married, and she was cheating on her husband with this guy. Woo, both of them were fine, honey. Both of them was fine. But the guy sh- who she was messing with on the side, this Negro ended up being a narcissist. He ended up being a serial killer. Well, I ain't going to say a serial killer. He was a narcissist because he ended up demising himself. Did that to torture her. He kidnapped her because he was like, I don't mess with married women. Like you, She should have told him she was married. I, I can't remember if she told him or not. But I remember him saying, I don't mess with married women. And he was like, you my woman. This lady, a whole, she, she in a whole marriage with kids. And messing around, her, her husband having a hard time or whatever. And child, she done fell for the okie doke. And she messing around with this guy. And this guy ended up being crazy. Following her everywhere. Stalking her. Beating up people who she's encountered. Like, bitch, she a lawyer. Beat up one of her clients. Because he like, I'm your man. Who is this guy? Why you got this guy in your heart? Stalkish. 
Crazy. So don't think a woman is scorned because that's what the society thinks. A woman is not scorned unless she wants to be. A woman is scorned only if she truly does not heal internally. Babe, you are a beautiful butterfly. You understand? Ready to get your wings out and fly away with all those high vibration colors. But you know a butterfly starts off as a caterpillar in a cocoon. Oh, I actually watch. Uh, I'll be looking at like the scientific stuff on TikTok. And uh, I was watching this guy uh, with all these uh, caterpillars or whatever. Caterpillars or whatever the thing is called. It turned into a butterfly, y'all. Be watching so much stuff. But it, they were showing how they wrap up and they make their cocoon. And it was all in this tree. And then, they, you know, once they, their life is spent, they turn into the butterfly. But you only will be scorned and in hatred and bitter if you allow a person like that to have that type of power over you. <laughs> Baby, stop letting people have power over you. Mm-mm. When they know they have no power over you, what they do? Run to the next. Run to the next who they think they're going to control. Okay? So don't put this in your head of listening to all this crap on social media where people be sitting up there saying, oh, the next person going to catch it that they get into a relationship with and all this and that. Only way the next person will catch all that crazy stuff if you have not truly healed. That's why you can't be jumping from relationship to relationship and you haven't truly uh, heal your inner self. You heal your inner self, you're going to see the red flags before you even get into them. Like, you're going to cut it off like exit, not entertaining this bull crap. You understand? So number seven, seeking support, trusted confidence. We talked about this yesterday, the day before. We're going to always talk about seeking support. Talk to family and friends or professionals that you can confide in about your experience or things that you went through that you can trust and you won't have to hear it back in the streets, all right? Whether it's support groups, online, or professionals. Explore local and online support groups for survivors of narcissist abuse. We kind of went through that. We went through that yesterday. Professional assistance, we talked about that and went through that yesterday. Therapy consideration, all right? I'm always going to refer you and tell you to seek out for a counselor, whether it is a spiritual counselor, meaning Christ Jesus, Christian counselors, or therapists, or a psychiatrist. Reflect on whether seeking professional therapy or counseling would be beneficial for you. You a lot of people don't like to talk about their problems. Oh, I'm gonna just let the Lord handle you. Got to do the work, you got to put action. God is waiting on you, God is waiting on you to put action behind what you need to do. Okay, legal advice always seek legal advice if it escalates, they're not set, they're not uh respecting your boundaries you so many people across social media that's being demised being kidnapped all this love and hate these people are killing their girlfriend killing their husband killing all this stuff is going on okay so seek legal advice make documentation we're talking about documenting 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 if necessary consider seeking legal advice to understand your rights and options if you are not aware i'm not a legal advisory that's why i will recommend you to seek out to the said professionals man moving forward self-care practice self-care practice girl you are unique, you are beautiful, you are lovely, you are victorious, you are strong, you are enough, you are capable, you are amazing, and you are never alone. Start working on you, girl. Start working on you, boy, and it's going to feel good, okay? 
Don't be bitter. Don't be sad. If your narcissist move on and with somebody else and living their life and doing what they be happy for them. Bitter people won't be happy. They'll be hurt. Oh, he ain't do this with me and he doing it. Who cares, girl? Who cares, girl? Who cares, boy? Focus on you. What you need to be doing is caring and focusing on yourself. You understand? Because what's for you is going to be for you. And what is not, is not. Period. Okay? So, list self-care activities that promote healing and emotional well-being. Future relationship goals. Outline qualities and expectations for healthy relationships moving forward. All right? Moving forward. Focus on you. Get your glow up. Get your glow up. Get your get your get your, get, your, get your glow up. All right. So that is going to complete our presentation. Just one time, my presentation, because baby, I always come with a presentation, baby. Period. You feel me? All right. So that is going to complete our worksheet. Don't forget, just because we did all this, please take the uh verse for today Ephesians chapter 5 verse 13 write it down so you can receive your personal reflection the verse was but when anything is exposed to light it becomes visible it's in plain sight you're just not looking you're not listening clearly you're not looking and you're not listening all right feel free to use the soap method again there are tons and tons of information down in my description click on those links get that information use it uh on your personal time when you're journaling or just having some self time to reflect write this verse down ask god pray to god like god how does this verse applies with my lifestyle so you can receive your personal reflection contemplate instances where you encounter covert manipulation and its impact reflect on how awareness can shield you from these hidden tactics because you've been fooled you've been fooled but now most of you some of you even the people who are going through it now you are awake and you got work to do it doesn't stop here just because you're out of the relationship or you're out of the marriage. You have work to do. You understand? So tap into your purpose. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I never was afraid. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid to share your testimony because, baby, you are a warrior. You understand? You are a warrior. You are a survivor. And one thing, God don't play. He don't play about his children. You understand? He don't play about his children. Why these people are out here playing with these demonic entities? Karma got something for you. And I hope you're ready for it. All right. So with that being said, this is your girl, Minister Crystal. You guys make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on post notifications so you'll be notified every time I upload another video. And follow the channel. Share these video out with family, friends, and loved ones across your social media so they will know what your girl here is doing, y'all. I know I get tied up sometimes why I don't be setting these premieres up because I be having a lot of stuff going on. Or like, okay, okay, okay. Your girl do have you. She have her own little gig. What she got going on? You feel me? So share the videos out again. Peace, love, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Shalom.